Welcome to part two of my interview, AVTV interview with Mark Tukey. Um, Tukes, you know, you had a bit of success at the Warriors. Um, you were there for you know, a few years. You then went a bit over to my old club in Castleford in England. How did that all come about? Yeah, so in uh, 2004, I was playing a little bit of reserve grade in New Zealand, um, playing for uh, Mount Albert Lions, actually. And um, to qualify to go to England, you have to, back then it was a percentage quota. Yeah. So I was, um, my manager was kind of um, fielding um, interest from over there and um, my percentage was running out really quickly. Yeah. So I had to be 75%. Yeah. So with about 10 games to go in the um, English Super League season, that I, we basically got the phone call and I had to get my um, visa sorted kind of in three or four days and all this type of thing. So uh, we had to make a decision if we're going to go or not. And um, I wasn't getting too many games in, um, in at the Warriors in the yeah. NRL at the time. So um, Daniel Anderson had just um, uh, left and Tony Kemp was the coach and Ali Lautiti had just been sacked and there was a bit yeah. of turmoil at the club at the time. So we made the decision to up and go. So I spent, um, in 2004, I got over there with 10 games to go at Castleford and um, to try and save them from relegation and um, just missed. Yeah, it was, I, um, I know you're a bit of a fan's favorite because I keep in contact with all the supporters over there and they absolutely loved you, but I know when that, that time came and, and, and they went and Cats got relegated, it was just, for the first, that's the first time they've been relegated. Yeah. yeah and, um, was such a, a massive thing for the town and you know the, as you know the Castleford town just loves rugby league and they yeah. live and breathe it and um, and as I've said you off camera I got an offer to come back that same year to to play but I was sort of I thought I was close to playing first grade of the Bronx so I didn't come over but it was certainly I know from the other side of the world I was gutted when they when they mm. went down and, and I was lucky enough to go over the next year and play in the grand final to get them up so but yeah, I, I know they thought highly of you over there, and that's and that again, and it comes down to actually having time for the fans and supporters, yeah. and just being a, a bloke. And if I, if I could give any advice to players, current NRL players, is actually get to know your supporters and spend yeah. some time with them because when you retire, you are one of them. Yeah, <laughs> and they make, they make who you are. They make yeah. who you are, and and I, it, it, I, the Cast fans were so accommodating to me. I was only there for a short time, yeah. and in tough times as yeah. well, and. Um, yeah, I, I, I've still got people in contact on Facebook yeah. now that uh, keep in touch and have a chat. So, yeah, definitely made some really good friends over there. How did, so you, did, you obviously were relegated, you then get an offer from, from London? Yeah, so I got relegated, we got relegated and um, we were in England. I had a two-year-old baby at the time, or one, one-year-old baby, and my manager's kind of, I'm kind of saying, where to now type of thing. Yeah. He goes, I'll go have a holiday. Um, so we went down to London to um, do a week's holiday on our way back to Australia to find out what's next type of thing. And uh, while we're in London, I got a phone call from my manager and said, oh, Tony Ray from the London Broncos is going to come to your hotel and have a chat. So, um, yeah, I remember meeting him, him coming into our hotel room, we're basically sitting on the bed and um, struck a bit of a deal yeah. there. So, so I went to London Broncos while I was on holiday. Yeah. Were you cuddling when you made that deal or is it just... No, no, there was no man hugs. It was just uh, down to business. But um, we, uh, yeah, so signed there and I had a really good time in London. London's a bit of a different place where it's very, very fast. Yeah. It's massive, it's busy, but um, no one knows who you are. Yeah. No one cares about rugby yeah. league, who you are in rugby league down there. So you're a bit of a bit anonymous and um, you can really just go about your business, which was refreshing at yeah. my, that stage of my career. And you'd really notice it also too with the supporters. You've come from a, a town. <laughs> yeah, fanatical. Class or whatever, they're just fanatical. And then you're in London where you don't really have a lot of. Nah, that's stuff. right. Yeah, and it was it was refreshing. Um, and it was always funny to to go back and like play against, um, you know, play up in uh, back up in yeah. towards Leeds yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. When the crowds, the crowds are fanatical. Yeah. I love the I love the supporters, and um, they definitely give it to you. So, did anyone say over in England while you're playing about eating pies or anything like that? Oh, a few of them mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who ate all the pies or something? And oh, you did, you did. So I got all those ones, and uh, I I remember one day one of the games I remember most is we played Wakefield down at um, London's old home ground at. Brent, Brentford, Brentwood, yeah. and uh, 
it was the first time I'd played in snow. It actually started snow and I come off the bench and we, we actually won 76 to nil or four or something and Paul Sykes has kicked 11 from 11 in the snow. But um, every time we'd score a try, I'd have to run back to the away crowd yeah. and cop it from them. And uh, security had to get called once because uh, I was telling them to look at the scoreboard and things like that. But um, but yeah, it's all, and like the way the crowd changes when they're running at the other end and things like that, that's just, and uh, they sing songs and they heckle you. and. You've got to experience it, I think. It's yeah, yeah well, they're, they're very humorous and they don't miss you when they when they don't like you. So <laughs> if you're slightly yeah. overweight, they pick on you. It's great. Oh, I think that <laughs> any any Aussie player that's come over, and, you know, they they gave it to Matty Baum when he went over, and uh, Chris Sandow, I think they gave it him as well. Yeah. Um, was Johnny Wells at London then? Johnny Wells yeah. was over there, yeah, yeah there's, a, there's some really good players there. Even um, Pricey, um, um, the winger. Wayne Price. Wayne Price, yeah. yeah. Um, I've, I actually kept in touch with uh, Andy Lynch, he's a oh, very yeah. nice player yeah, yeah. as well. So, yeah, there's, there's plenty. Um, um, Wayne Goodwin, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. heaps of them that, we, that I caught up with. Yeah, I think if we had a, a Wayne Goodwin over here in uh, in Australia, it would be very interesting times. One of the probably best characters of, of rugby league that I've played with, uh, yeah. Wayne. Yeah, I have Wagger and uh, another guy, Natty Wood. Oh, yeah. Nathan Wood was a lunatic um, that I played with at the Warriors, and yeah, I have him in the same basket. I think Nathan Wood used to go and break into people's units and scare the hell out of them. Yeah, he, yeah, he, uh, one good story at the Warriors, he, he put the uh, mask on with the big long mouth and the scary mask and climbed on the balcony of um, Ivan Cleary's house. And uh, he climbed in the window, turned on the bedside radio, and little Nathan, <laughs> little Nathan Cleary, who's now <laughs> captain yeah. playing for the Penrith Panthers, he uh, came in to kind of see what was going on, and, and Nathan Woods jumped up and scared the bejesus out of him, and um, I think he's had nightmares ever since. But uh, but yeah, he was a character. He doesn't watch any scary movies. <laughs> no, and, and that's what, and uh, you you were seen as a character in the game just because you're. You know, the, the way you were and you, you just enjoyed life and, and, and I think a little bit of that's going out of the game now. I think there's yeah. a lot of robots now and, and they've got to be this and that and if you say anything untoward or bring the scenes under the yeah, you, it's, it's sort of, I'm glad it's a bit sterile. We came in that, through that era yeah, in a lot of ways and just just got to play footy. That's it, yeah. And um, it was more relaxed and the, back, back in our day there was no phones. No. No cameras, no videos, yeah. no idiots filming it and yeah. trying to be heroes and putting it on Facebook and stuff. So I think that that's the massive difference with just the social media side of things. Yeah. And I think if you go through time, to be fair, every era has got better and better and better in terms of behaviour. So these current ones pretty well are yeah. the saints compared to 50 years ago. Yeah, even think, you look at now, you look a lot of the things that have happened in the last maybe three or four years it's a lot of the older guys that yeah. are doing it still yeah. they're still struggling to yeah, adjust yeah. from the old days and the new age type yeah. thing these young kids that come through the 20 system now not too many of them are doing yeah. anything stupid yeah. um, they're, they are under pressure and they are doing you know yeah. to ending life type of thing but um in general they, they know that the rules now they're just under a lot of pressure yeah. it's, it's so young that's the main thing yeah well I think I said in, in the interview with Campo, my only advice is if you're on uh, 300,000 a year or 200,000, whatever, it's uh, make sure you yeah. stay out of trouble because it takes a lot to replace to earn that money <laughs> yeah. going into life, and which probably Correct. leads me into in, into your next chapter of life, Tooks. Um, you leave London. What what's what uh, happened after that? Yeah, so it's funny. I got to a stage where my, I was only 29. Um, my body was just getting old. Um, again, I didn't really look after it too much. I trained hard all the time. And I had osteitis pubis, um, where it was just a, an aching, um, like groin muscle injury. Uh, it wouldn't go away, and I was just getting a bit weathered in and, and losing a bit of interest. So I said to the missus that we'll go back to either New Zealand or Australia. We had to kind of make a decision. Um, we decided to go back to Australia, where our families were, take the kids yeah. back. Um, and then, yeah, I signed, actually signed with Redcliffe um, Dolphins. Um, for, to have one last season in the Q yeah. Cup, I wanted to have a, go, have a, try, have a try at that, uh, but I'd, I'd switched off, I'd yeah. retired, my, my head and my body had yeah. retired, and uh, when I got to training and uh, they were, we were doing 400s and things like that, I, I just couldn't get it done, so I um, actually, I, I told the coach that at the time, I said, listen, I've got to, um, that was Hook Griffin, yeah. I, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding myself and I'm kidding you, yeah. uh, and then Adam Starr actually was the player who retired for me to join in, and then he come back and yeah. had another year 
I think so. I just retired, and that was uh, one of the toughest things in my life. Really, I had no, I had nothing. Yeah. Um, I, I, I wanted to get a job. I had no qualifications because we never really done nothing. Um, so, and everything requ requires a ticket now. So, I had to recall, recall on a, a footy friend, and I worked for Retrovision for a little while doing delivery driving, mm -hmm. and then I got really lucky with the guy who actually recruited me to the NRL, Brian Edwards. Yeah. He was working for the Raiders at the time, and and and, and I caught up with him, and he kind of give me an inkling that there could be a position coming up as a development officer yeah. in the area of Logan, so, which they had the affiliation with the Raiders at the time, and I just got lucky. Yeah. Um, right place, right time, um, and I worked with the Raiders, and uh, doing junior development and recruitment um, is the most rewarding uh, job I've ever done. Yeah. Um, to open a door for a young kid and to um, make his dreams come true, um, that's pretty rewarding for me. And I, my first one was I went back to my old school, Woodridge High, and saw a kid named Josh Papali who was running around. Um, he was, I didn't find him, but he was uh, he had already been found, but nothing was really happening. And I, I kind of pushed the issue a little bit with Brian to get him to the Raiders. Mm. And um, probably the turning point for Josh was the Raiders came up um, in the off season, and had a bit of a scrimmage against our 18 year olds, brought up theirs, and a guy named Shannon Boyd and um, and uh, Josh Papali just butted heads and mm. ripped them each other apart uh, in the first half, and we just took them off the field and said, "Yeah, we've seen enough," type of thing. And maybe didn't have for feed both. Right? Yeah, I know. And the rest is history. Really, yeah. they're both playing for Australia, and they're both at the top of their game. So mm. uh, that's the rewarding thing. Yeah, we, we had a really good development system at the Raiders and um, at South Logan and the Raiders. So uh, um, I was lucky enough to have blokes like Edric Lee, Branko Lee, Luke Bateman, yeah. Sam Matora. You know, there's a yeah. Milford come through yeah. us with us as well. So the, the the list was endless, and it's really it's just rewarding to see those guys kick on. Yeah, and I know you're real passionate about it. You know, I've seen you around the traps for your coaching, be it at South Logan or be it in the rep stuff. And I know you're really passionate about putting back into the game because I guess. You know, a lot of people did that with you, and it's. I think that's great. You know, that the fact that you can, you do that. Next players do that, and uh, you know, and plus you get a little bit out of it yourself. Yeah, I've never taken um, my life for granted. Really, yeah. it's um, what I've done. I've lived. The, I've been lucky. I've lived a great life, and people have have to help me along the way. And it's, if I can give back, I I give back a lot to charity and um, and even to my community up there in Logan. Uh, as much as I can, I, can I, I, I have trouble saying no. Yeah. We'll come back with uh, Tooks in part three of this interview and uh, talk a little bit more about that charity and family and, and, uh, and marathon, marathons. <laughs>